Today we are going to begin exploring Pat a Shoe and we are going to start off with the cracklin or the cookie part that is going to go over the top of our shoe, um, which is the dough we are going to make later. So this is just a really, really simple mixture of butter, sugar, and then flour. So first I'm just going to cream the butter and sugar really, really well, scrape down the sides of my bowl and add in the flour. As you get into different flavors or textures, for your pate choux later and depending on if you're making a large shoe or an eclair or a shoe cut or whatever it is you might want to add a different flour a different sugar or you could add in some flavoring here but for today let's keep it as simple as possible this is something that you don't need a lot of but it is really easy to make in a decent sized batch and then you will have it for all of your shoe recipes if you are making several different ones if you're just making one however you can make a really tiny batch no problem once this is all combined i'm going to portion it out and add a little bit onto a piece of parchment paper add some more parchment paper on the top of that and then i'm going to roll it out really really thin now because my butter was room temperature this cookie part the cracklin is really soft so i'm using my rolling pin to just smear it around <laughs> instead of like properly rolling it especially in the beginning and then I also am trying to have as few wrinkles as possible in my parchment paper you could also use silicone or a teflon baking sheet for the two sheets um, that you are sandwiching the cracklin dough after you get your really thin sheet of cracklin into the freezer it goes this is super important because as you saw at room temperature because of the high butter content this dough is really soft. So once it is frozen solid, get the parchment sheets off of there and immediately get in here with your cookie cutter or circle cutter, whatever you're using. You could use the top part of a glass, whatever you want to cut all of your circles. Then because this sheet is so thin, this dough is going to warm up really quickly. So you want to transfer all of these circles onto our baking pan again on that parchment and then get this back into the freezer now i really recommend you start here when you are making your pat -a shoe because you want this to be ready when your shoe dough is ready so it is i think an important thing to do first so it has time to freeze solid both times now you can reuse these scraps of the cracklin especially because we didn't use any flour or anything to roll it out so make sure you ball that back up once it comes to room temperature and save it for another use you can roll that out again Now it's time for the pata shoe. This is not too difficult if you know what you're doing and there are really pretty simple ingredients in here, but it can be a little confusing the first time or two that you make it. So let's walk through this together. So into a saucepan, I am putting my butter, sugar, just a little bit, salt again, just a little bit, water and milk. So I have all of that in my saucepan. Then separately, I have my eggs that I've cracked and they're in a container. And then I also have my flour, which I obviously recommend sifting, but if you don't, hopefully it won't be the end of the world. Now I'm going to put that butter, milk, water, sugar, salt mixture onto my stove. First, I really wanna make sure the butter has a chance to melt. Then I am going to increase the heat a little bit and I want to bring this to a simmer. This will take a couple minutes. You don't have to stand there stirring it constantly, but as soon as it starts to simmer, it will simmer up over the sides of your pot if you're not careful, so make sure you are standing nearby. Then I am going to add in the flour off the heat 
Give that a really good stir. I usually start off with my whisk and then switch to my spatula once it thickens. And as soon as it thickens up and all of the flour is incorporated, I'm going to turn this back on to sort of a low, medium, low heat. And I am going to use my spatula to turn this around my pan to make sure that everything is fully incorporated and all of this mixture is being completely heated through. I want the pat -a -shoe to look really homogenous and I want it to be a little bit glossy. I want it to be like one big dough, but I don't want it to be sticky or like super oily or anything like that. Once it does look like that, it should be steaming hot then transfer it into the bowl of your stand mixer or you could use a hand mixer as well. Just know this does take a bit of time. You will be standing there for a while. Now with my paddle attachment, I am going to mix the pad -a -shoe dough so far on a sort of medium speed until it stops steaming. I want to drop the temperature down so it is still warm. It's above room temperature, but I do not want it to cook or curdle the eggs when I add them in. While it is still whipping, I will add in the eggs one at a time. You don't necessarily have to crack them before you do this, but I think it's a lot easier, especially because there are so many eggs in padashu, especially as you get to a larger and larger batch. You do not want to be cracking one one egg at a time into your bowl. But the kind of tricky thing about Padashu is that kind of like when you're looking for a macronage with macrons and some people have a different preference for how long or how short to macronage, the number of eggs that your shoe dough want to take on might be a little bit different <laughs> from one time to the next. So you might find yourself adding or removing an entire egg um, in your kitchen, even with a really fantastic pad -shoe recipe. At least that is what I was taught in pastry school. And that is a normal thing um, just based on the condition of the dough and all sorts of other things. Once all the eggs are fully incorporated, your dough should look really shiny. It should be smooth, but have a little bit of an elastic feel to it. When you pull the dough up, it should break off, but in a sort of triangular sort of pattern at the bottom of your uh, paddle attachment or spatula. I am going to show you a couple of different recipes here, but let's focus on just baking the pata shoe for now, and I'll reserve the rest for another video. So I'm transferring the pad -a -shoe I want to pipe into a piping bag with a piping tip. I am just going to show you some sort of medium sized shoe today. So I am piping this. I am using a template. I'm piping onto my silicone baking mat. You can use parchment, you can use Teflon, whatever you want. And I am piping it in kind of a similar style to a macaron, but I want it to be a little bit more domed than that. I want it to be like a hemisphere. Now, pad -a -shoe dough, the one thing I really love about it is that you can cool it down completely and then pipe it later. You can pipe it into molds and then freeze it. It's really, really versatile once it is made. Once it is piped or once you have the molds turned out onto your baking sheet, then go ahead and immediately press on your cracklin that's frozen if you are going to use it. You can also use an egg wash or something on the other shoe, but I want you to see what happens if you do nothing. Now into the oven, this goes. The baking process is a little bit challenging. Do not at all ever open the oven door when you are baking shoe until the very, very end. End. Now, most recipes for shoe will call for a higher oven temperature right at the beginning. Then once it rises up, then you'll drop the temperature and bake it at a lower degree for a longer amount of time. So the bake time is pretty long for baked things in general, but it is so worth the wait. 
I really love the look of shoes that have crackling on them, so I am going to bake most of my medium-sized shoe that way, and then I am going to get into a bake after this. There are so many different things you can do with Pata Shoe, and I'm so excited to start exploring some of these different things with you. I'm going to start off with a really, really basic cream for like a cream puff, and then we're going to get into some other large shoe, some gougeres, which is a more savory aspect of shoe, and then hopefully some other really fun things like eclairs, Saint Honoré, all of that later on. So get this down, the basic pâte choux recipe, and then we can start exploring this whole genre of pastry together.